hello I was working on this video for about a week now um, just doing research on some information I felt like you know Abba was showing me you know being led by the Holy Spirit and the two seats of authority like the seat of authority kept kind of coming up in my spirit and so I'm like huh okay so how do you want me to proceed with this because I'm not really sure <laughs> I don't understand exactly what you're talking about, you know, I'm willing to, to be led, so very interesting, and there was a, let's see, Rifka Ministries, I really like that, they are talking about how the Pope last year, you know, this seat of David, or like sitting in the tomb of David, so I started doing some research, and look at this, I'm going to go back to this one, this, um, this too. This is from Times of Israel, and I'll post a link. Here he is in the sitting up in the tomb, uh, the seat of authority. So I thought that was really interesting. And I'm going to go through and uh, do some connections that the Lord had made. So here is him sitting in the, it's the mass of cynical. I guess that's what they call the upper room or something. So not to be cynical, <laughs> but uh, that's not good. And so I went through and I was looking, making some other connections. So we have him in May 26, 2014, getting a seat over the tomb of King David. Now this is from JewishIsrael.com and so Pope to get seat over the tomb of King David and here it is. So I started thinking about oh, seat of authority. That's very interesting. So this was last year. I'll go to another one here. And so there's lots of different articles about this. So Mass on Mount Zion stirs ancient rivalries. Of course, it does. They don't belong there. And and here is again Mass by Pope Francis in the cynical, the hall on Jerusalem's mount. Okay, so here he's on here in this this upper room called the cynical. So I wanted to go through this and look at this. And here is an official seat in the upper room located over the tomb of King David. So as I was looking through this, I really started noticing, and the Lord's like, look up seat of authority. So I'm like, okay, teachers of the law, and it talks about Moses' seat, or Moshe's seat. And then, and then here is this. I thought this, was, this language was really cool. So the Antichrist here mentioned is a usurper of God's authority in the Christian church. So, you know, he's specifically talking about this. So you can Google and look this up. Now, this inter it was interesting because here, it kind of if you kind of group them together in that way, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. Revelation 13, 2, and the beast I saw resembled a leopard. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So I thought that was really something about, you know, the seat of authority. So I looked and this reminded me of Jeremiah. And it says, a lion is gone forth from his thicket, and a destroyer of nations, he is on his way, a, and is gone forth from his place to make the land desolate, and the cities be laid waste without inhabit. And so this is Jeremiah 4, 7, and he talks about, for this gird you with sackcloth, lament, lament and wail, for the fierce, fierce anger of Jehovah has not turned back from us. So that language is very concise. It kind of talks about the lion also and the destroyer of nations, which that relates back to Passover, Pesach video that I did this prior to this one. So you go through and it says, Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as the whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are ruined. 
O Jerusalem, wash thy heart from wickedness, and thou mayest be saved. How long shall thine evil thoughts lodge within thee? For a voice declareth from Dan, unpublish evil from the hills of Ephraim. Publish, see so get words very precise, publisheth evil like um, the scrolls, like Esther, and, and, you know, that kind of stuff is very interesting. Now, as I was going through this, I started thinking about the seat of authority and seats, and then it hit me. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. Obama chairs a UN Security Council summit today. Here's what's expected. And this was September 24, 14, but it goes on and it talks about, this is from the Washington Post. Obama became the first U.S. president to serve chair of a panel in 2009, his first year in the White House. This time, that time around, he led a session on preventing the spread of nuclear weapons and his efforts helped bring about the passage of a resolution aimed at strengthening international safeguards against proliferation. So here it is, this nuclear stuff, which also, you know, you go back to Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer and General Roller II is the, the destroyer of nations. So, I mean, I thought that was really something. And here is again, this other article, rents.com, I don't know what this is, but I think, you know, I thought it was interesting because it talks about you know, U.S. President taking uh, the chairmanship of the powerful U.N. Security Council. You know, and he talks about the Constitution here, Section 9 of the Constitution, no title of nobility shall be granted by the U.S. And no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of the Congress, accept of any president a present emolument, office, or title of any kind, whatever, from any king, prince, or foreign state. And you in the United Nations, that's, uh, you know, did he get, you know, that from the Congress? I don't know. But it goes on and talks about this. And I thought that was really interesting. Now, this is something. Now, this is from, where is this one from? Oh, the Washington Post again. And that talks about March 31st, the Obama administration decided Tuesday to seek a seat on the UN Human Rights Council, reversing the decision by the Bush administration to shun the United Nations' premier rights body to protest the influence of rep repressive states. So it goes through and it talks about this, and then look at this. The next round of elections to the council will be held May 15th in the UN General Assembly in New York. So that elective seat or seat of authority happened in May 15th of 2009. I think that's when the election took place and I, that started really making sense. Now this is a dream um, by the barn that's posted on that website. You can go look at it yourself. Um, this is, I forget what it was, uh, and Glory Dream or something like that. And then he's, she goes and she talks about the tallest, um, the vision went to zoom over a city with the tallest building, which, Dubai. <laughs> it talks about and the contracts, and then she saw a lion. Again, that's the language very specific to what we just read. Now... In the fourth year, and I thought this was really neat um, because this year is a leap year, which is kind of, I don't know, telling, I guess. And then talks about this leader traveling or diplomat around the 10 sublands, not certain that he had gone all at one time, but he had blessed the 10 sublands with hidden signals and signs for greater deceptions against Israel. Now, when you look at that, this is like Yeshua telling this telling Aaron, this um, lady that had these dreams, Aaron, do you not trust me? Look back on the dreams. Are there not layers of love? Each one has parables, signs, and wonders. Each one lines up with the season, but in advance of it. Each one brings you closer. Each one reminds you that we are in the last days. Each one points to my word and gives glory to me. 
um, that Yeshua is speaking. Each one provides a call to action. Each one portrays spiritual events in advance as well as in current time. All this is to prove that these are from me. And these are pictographs. So this would be an ancient form of being able to communicate with his creation. Now, um, it talks about each shook with the right hand while their hand was on their shoulder of their left. And I've seen that so many times with politicians do that. It's really creepy. Um, the leader from Israel invited the diplomat and king. Now, could that be two people? I don't know. It, it Possibly there's two seats. We know, you know, Obama has a seat in the UN, and then here you have the Pope a seat at David's temple. So man of Torahlessness or lawlessness, man of sin, Torahlessness, and then you have son of destruction. So it kind of makes a little sense. Um, now, what's interesting, this tour of innocence, and I think there was a pope named Pope Innocent. I'm not, you know, so I thought it was really interesting. So I kind of broke this down and then um, showing it. So this happened in 2014, but it also could be another season getting ready to happen because of this whole thing with the blood. Now, the word had gone out, amount of new Christians remaining over the land. What had happened, the population now turned on the remaining sheep. And this was a great deception. Um, and not to follow this when the blood is then registered. And what's really interesting is that this was in, okay, she had this dream in 2013. Now, if you go up, go up here, here's my references I'm going to be posting in the description box. Look at this. Now, this is... This happened June 4th, 2015, and it says your viral, viral infection history in a single drop of blood. And you can go through this and read this. I saw this and immediately, again, a picture brought into my mind of what um, this said in here in uh, this dream. And then here's, here's when it happened. So this article comes up 11... 11 14 so the dream was in 2013 pope took the seat in may of 2014 and then so could it have been that this came out back then so here it is it's showing this article and i'll link it in the description box biomarkers and they're gonna use this again it's just, it's a device devised his devices again that's language from from Esther my goodness Lord have mercy so and this would be talking about using a single drop of blood from this machine or this device to find out all this information and again here you have gates what does it talk about gates in scripture this is very sad. Just, you know, getting this out here was really, I know it was really important. I've been working on this for a while. As well as um, this calendar. I've been working on this for a while. Now, this, one of my friends did this. And I thought it was really cool. So I've layered, I've been working on this for a while. So I layered you have the current Hebrew calendar with the current Gregorian calendar laid, and I laid the um, creation calendar on top of it. So I've been going through this and um, layering this up. So I thought this was really neat how the Lord did this. Now, I'm going to February, which to me because the creation calendar hasn't reached to Abib yet. This is still part 5775. Now, look at this. This is really neat. This is Purim Katan. This is a feast that's not really celebrated. It's like once every four years this comes about because of the way the calendar is. But can God use different translations? Absolutely. And here is just one example of that. Because one translation said that Esther was taken in Tibet, or Tibet, the month of Tibet. One translation says Adar. Here, you have the only time 
when it was Tevet and Adar, which is really cool. And it's also February 222, so 222 Uriel, which is really neat. And then, of course, the new moon. Now I went and I did this over here in March. Now, this was neat because this is also a solar eclipse that's happening in March. And then this is a lunar eclipse. It's called a penumbral lunar eclipse, which is the fast of Esther on the current Hebrew calendar. And it's a double Adar because it's Adar on the creation calendar and Adar on the um, current Hebrew calendar. So there's a kind of a synchronicity about that. Now, this is neat because April, again, will be, this is the current Hebrew calendar day. And I really like um, to give, you know, honor. It, the Call of the Bride has done such an amazing job of, of encouraging people. And I think there's one that talked about the next seven. So we have two sets of seven. We're not, I'm not sure which one. So here is... <laughs> five seven seven five and it'll be that way until we get to the creation calendar when it changes to five seven seven six so I um I, I did this now what's really cool is I think this could possibly be an, a, an end marker because this oh the seat that Obama took at the UN was on May 15th and that would be technically if you're looking at it as United Nations in New York and and looking at it as a hundred and what is that 123 countries or whatever at the time and UN seat but I thought it was funny when I looked I was like unseat him oh, okay that's really funny but that would be ending on May 15th so that seventh year could possibly go to this long because of the UN seat now because think about it office of the president so it's office of the presidency or the oval office yes but and then you have the seat though which is a completely different type of authority which is really interesting since he's the only president in history to ever do this could this possibly be an end date yeah and you back it up with a 40-day harvest. So we're really, really, really in the high watch time right now. And I really want to do this to encourage people, you know, please don't go to sleep. Wake up. Keep, you know, keep going. Keep doing what you're supposed to. And I wanted to encourage this about Shabbat. And again, this is our, our in our Congo here, our congregation. And it's, um, it, it's, it's Exodus 20, fits the pattern. I wanted to go through and read just a little bit. In addition, Shabbat is the sign of the covenant. Functions as the means by which we say we are in covenant relationship with, with um, Yah Yahovah or Yahovah or Yahuwah under his grace. It is the sign or seal. See the previous discussion. You can look this up. That the covenant between Yahuwah and us is operational guaranteed as such it is part of the essence of what it means to be a jew or those who join themselves to israel okay you go through certain patches um, passages to keep something holy means to set it apart separate it for yahuwah from uh, for yahuwah from the ordinary purposes of the week it's to be set apart for yahuwah in order to build up and renew our life with him worship and instruction play an important role to this and so it goes through here and talks about um, uh, Meredith Klein expressed it well. By means of this Sabbath keeping, the image bearer of God, or Yahuwah, images the pattern of that divine act of creation which proclaims Yahuwah's absolute sovereignty over man and thereby pledges his covenant consecration to his maker. The creator has stamped on world history the sign of his Sabbath as a seal of ownership and authority. That is precisely what the picture on this on the dynastic seal symbolized in their captions claim in behalf of the treaty gods and the representative, the suzerain. I think that's how you pronounce that. Isaiah calls Shabbat a delight because joy is the keynote care to and toil and grief and sorrow are to be banished fasting is forbidden 
Mourning is suspended and sin is not mentioned so as not to diminish our joy. And what are we supposed to have when he comes? That the oil of joy be in our lamps. And, you know, I encourage, you know, to, to look into this and ask, you know, the Father if, you know, to keep that and, and make it as a joy to you. And if you remember my last video, I talk about, you know, Naomi and what that means, delight, and Ruth followed that delight all the way to the home, to her homeland. So I want to encourage this, encourage you in this. And um, and the only other thing I'd like to say is that, which is really neat, is I, the scripture here. In the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. After saying above sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have not desired, nor have you taken pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law, is a heart matter. And get this, and he said, Then I said, Here I am, he named me, I have come, it is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God, Yahuwah. Your law was written within my heart. I have not been rebellious and turned away. Take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you concerning Israel, Judah, and all the other nations from the time I began speaking to you in the reign of Josiah until now. So he found, Yeshua found himself in the scroll written in the book. You know, in our congregation, we have the Hebrew readings. We also have English readings. Now, it, it, is the scripture true? Yes. Can God use any version? Yes. Again, you just saw that with the calendar kind of coming together with Tevet and Adar on, the, on one day only. And it kind of like it's like a marker, like a sign. Hey, look, I can do this. I'm creator of the universe, and I can use anything. I made everything, and it's all for my glory. And so to only say that he can only speak in one language, it's just limiting him, and we shouldn't do that. God can speak in all languages because he created all languages and all all translations. And again, you know, Rabbi's wife once said that every translation is an interpretation. And if he, Yeshua himself, found himself written in the scroll, Surely we can find ourselves written in English version for those, you know, Israelites that speak only English and are working to learn how to speak Hebrew. You know, some people are really good at languages, some people aren't. You know, everybody has strengths. And the greatest thing is that where we're weak, he is strong. So he's helping with all that. So I wanted to put this out as encouragement to keep looking up, you know, just because we don't understand something or the way it is, you know, doesn't mean that we need to oh, give up, you know, you just, okay, recalibrate, you know, let me think of, I'm thinking of this wrong, help me, Abba, help me, Holy Spirit, because you're my, you're my teacher, you're everything, you know, my guidance, my teacher, my, you know, comforter, and that's, that's the gift. You know, so keep looking up for him. Don't you go to sleep. You keep waiting. Just keep looking. And uh, I wanted to bless you with this. And if someone's struggling or having, you know, issues and are, are falling, just pray that, you know, God will strengthen them to help them through their trouble that they're having. And don't join the accuser or the brethren for anything because it's not worth it. You know, blessings and shalom.